Wow, so um, thank you so much for coming along thank this you, trip man. with me. You kidding me? The Nature Boy, live in the flesh. I mean, you are a living, breathing legend. Yeah, thank you. Um, in my own mind, for sure. In everybody else's mind, too, don't worry. Do you uh, know that I have a little bit of a surprise for you? I do not. After 25 years of nobody knowing where it was, mm -hmm. your iconic black butterfly robe just resurfaced. No. <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? Yes, the black butterfly wow. robe. And we are on our way right now to go get it. Right here in Johnson City, Tennessee, I'm going to find you. That Royal Rumble just completely changed my life. Wearing that robe that night just signified the fact that I wasn't what the people in Atlanta were saying I was. Man. WCW was WWE's chief rival for some time. Ted Turner was the proprietor, if you will, of WCW. And it, during that time, something took Rick's passion and confidence away. I've seen Flair in a lot of situations, Jimbo, and I, I know right now that this time in his oh. career, he's really having to reach down and fight back with this thing. When you know you're the deal, which I knew I was at one point in time, and, you, and all of a sudden, Someone who really doesn't know anything about the business is put in a position of power, don't even know what he was doing. Well, I just couldn't get along with the new guy that uh, Turner brought in. He had no respect for me at all. Ric Flair has uh, uh, spent a career bending the rules. We really don't care what Ric Flair has to say about the thing. He was all about change. He wanted to call me Spartacus. I cut my hair. I mean, I literally had a nervous breakdown cut of my hair. And we just couldn't get along. Now, you have walked across the line. That's when a herd was running me into the ground. You know, there were the, the word old, mm. which is the worst word you can hear, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I thought, what the hell? I mean, I was just lost. They wouldn't use me and wouldn't let me go. Just a 16-time world champ. <laughs> Unreal, man. After extensive negotiations with Nature Boy Ric Flair, stretching over the course of nearly one year, Parties have been unable to arrive at a mutually satisfactory contractual... He had promised me a new contract, and instead, he said to me, F you. You'll do what I tell you to do. I said, no, I won't. And he said, you're fired. I said, thank you. Nature boy Ric Flair stripped of the WCW World's Heavyweight Championship. I've never heard... I mean, that's never happened before in World Championship Wrestling. And Vince wanted me to come to New York, and... I just called him on the phone and said, you've asked me before, and I told you I'd come, and then I didn't. This time, if you want me, I'll come. And he said, um, well, OK, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it, something like that. Just a handshake and an opportunity. There's one, just one, world heavyweight champion, and you got to know it's me! The good news is, we might be leaving with this butterfly robe today. Today. You'll be leaving with me. Uh, <laughs> let's say we leave together. <laughs> oh. Richmond, Virginia, man. Had a lot of fun here. I ain't been here since DC training camp. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they do it right down the road. Hey, man, Nature Boy. Hey, man. Hey, what's going on? going to be here. How are you doing, oh, man? man? I'm good. I'm good. good How are you? Good. Hey, good to see you, brother. Welcome, guys. OK, this is nice. Hey, guys. <laughs> nice, nice. to see you. Jeez, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> AJ, great to see you. What's going on, Rich? How are you? Hey, man. How are you? Hey, Nature Boy. Nice to see you. Great to see you. Thank you. My biggest fan ever. Really? Oh, so you really? Do, so you do know him. From Comic-Cons, man. He doesn't miss them. <laughs> Rich is working on behalf of the, the owner of the robe. Yeah, for whatever reason, he didn't want to negotiate for himself. So he wanted me to come here today and speak on his behalf. All right. You have to see this. Yeah. So what if we don't give it back to him? Oh, What's okay. he going to do? I like my chances against you, Rich. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, you start to talk about finding something, and oh, there it is, for a brief second. You know what I mean? I also believe um, things happen for a reason, so that maybe there's a reason we were looking for it, maybe there's a reason all of a sudden we will find the person that has it, and, you know, it's an amazing part of Ric Flair's legacy and the history of our business. 
So you ready to see the road? Let's do yes. it. It's been a long time. Let's bring this up. Oh my God. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the Royal Rumble. Tell me, Mr. Flair, how did you fare in the Royal Rumble draw? Lord Alfred, I drew number three. To a lot of people out there, they'd say, my God, what a disadvantage you're going at. So a Royal Rumble match, for my money, is the best match in all of professional wrestling. And the reason why is it's at least 30, sometimes 40 or 50 people coming into the match every 90 seconds. The Royal Rumble is underway! And the only way to be eliminated is to be thrown over the top rope with both feet hitting the floor. So in the 1992 Royal Rumble, Ric Flair came in at number three, which is clearly a disadvantage. There's no chance he's gonna win. You know, he's gotta go through 27 other guys after this. Like, there's no way. That means I'll be in there close to an hour. It makes no difference. When I walk out, I will be the World Wrestling Federation champion against all odds, and that's the bottom line. When Flair comes to WWE for the first time, he comes to the grand stage. But everybody knows him, and everybody knows who he is. And he comes walking down the aisle in that black butterfly room. Oh, yes! It's Ric Flair! Couldn't take your eyes off him in the ring. He is one of the greatest in-ring performers. And what people don't understand about professional wrestling is it really is more akin to performance art. You really are taking the audience on a ride and making them sit on the edge of their seat wondering what's going to happen next. No one ever in the history of the Royal Rumble has drawn numbers one through five and been there at the end. If you enter the Royal Rumble before the first five spots, you're going to be in there for about an hour. You got to be able to go for an hour, minimum. Swearman in now, Monsoon. 50 minutes. 50 minutes. Almost approaching one hour. Two and a half minutes away from the record. To have a one hour match and keep the crowd captivated is a, a unique skill set. No human being should have to go through this. Shows you how bad he wants it. Shows you how bad he needs it. There's no DQs, no count outs. The alternative was an hour. And I just snuck in right behind. Just had to tip him. It's flaring from behind. Oh, yes, 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 yes. He got it. I told you, Ladies and gentlemen, I told you, Winnerson. A Royal Rumble. I told you, I told you. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Rick Flair. I was thinking to myself, am I really here? Is this happening? Yes. When I think of Ric Flair, I think of that role. And to be able to bring that back, it, it, you know, we need to have that piece in the archives. So you ready to see the road? Let's do yes. it. It's been a long time. Let's bring this up. Oh my god. Wow. Oh, my God. Cut, please. Jesus. That's absolutely amazing. If this isn't the uh, real deal, I don't know what is. Uh, it exactly. most definitely is, right there. When Olivia was making these, she was doing these rhinestones by hand. Her work was second to none, man. It would be very difficult to knock off an Olivia Walker original. The level of craftsmanship and design, this is unmistakably the missing butterfly robe. There you go. Jesus. Wow. Boy, it's in good shape, too. Great shape. And it's velvet? Wow. I mean, feel, feel this. It, oh, the weight is yeah. incredible. I had to give her three months' notice. Wow. Yeah. Wow. For me, it's golden. I can't put into words what it means to me emotionally. Nothing but great memories. Absolutely phenomenal. 
Woo, woo, woo. Back like you never left. You look great, man. Don't be ashamed of those butterflies. Millions of people have felt those butterflies. It's anxiety. It's tension. It's knowing you gotta go against the nature boy. Woo! Come into the WWE, and then once again, I'm I'm on top. All of a sudden, I'm back, and I'm with the big company. So I had to give them the tear in my eye. With a tear in my eye. <laughs> with a tear in my yeah, eye. With a tear in my eye. I to love it. To tell you. <laughs> but I'm actually right here. From the time I got there, I knew that I was in a better place. I didn't look at it as being vindication, but when they handed me the mic, I just it just rolled. This is the greatest moment in my life. When you walk around this world, you tell everybody you're number one. The only way you get to stay number one is to be number one. And this is the only title in the wrestling world that makes you number one. Woo! So clearly we're interested. We've been looking for this. We want to know what, what he wants. We, we want to walk away with this. Did you have uh, any particular number I, I could go back to him with? And... Yeah, not to interrupt you or Ben, but I mean, I think we, Conrad, he knows the history of everything and he knows it's worth because he's owned probably between five and six of my robes at a time. I've never met him in person. So of course, yeah. Yeah, he knows a, a lot idea. about it wrestling history oh, first great. off say hello to everybody hey c-man hey everybody hey hi conrad i conrad i'm sure you can see in the distance you see it oh there it is man i, the told, whole... him, I, I told him you know what it's worth dude i uh, i can't believe it's actually there like this is a real thing we've been looking for this forever look at the f condition of the feathers nobody's seen it in 25 years what do you think it's worth we're just throwing it around. Well, I mean, it's worth whatever somebody's willing to pay. The highest sale I know of was uh, the purple robe, which sold for 40000 This obviously is more rare because no one could ever find it. What's this guy need? What's it going to take to get this? Would you like me to take an offer back to the owner? I think it wouldn't hurt. Uh, what if we throw 50 at him? Uh, the worst thing he can say is no. I can ask him. Uh, let me text it over to him. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see uh, if he sends back a response.